Alright, so I know I'm a little bit late to this album, I just narrowly missed its actual 10th anniversary. The last few days have been very busy for me, so I apologize for that, but I'm back and I'm ready to talk about it. Welcome back to 10 Years Later, the series where I talk about albums from the 2010s that were either impactful to me, impactful to music in general, very popular, or just worth revisiting 10 years later for good or bad reasons. And now it's time to get into a record I was very excited to talk about. As you can tell from the title, the album that we'll be discussing today is the 2011 James Blake album. James Blake. It's self-titled. This was the debut studio album from London-based singer, songwriter, producer, and multi-instrumentalist extraordinaire James Blake. At the time of this release, James was slowly bubbling up thanks to the success of several EPs that he released in 2010. And while this album wasn't a commercial smash hit, it received several excellent reviews and made James Blake a very respected artist in the industry. Now, I never listened to this album back in 2011, but I knew it was one I had to talk about for this series. Some of you may know this because it's still my most viewed video, but one of my first album review and reaction videos was of James Blake's 2019 record, Assume Form. I absolutely adored that album, still very much enjoy it, and in the comments on that video, a lot of people were very highly recommending that I go back and listen to his older albums. When I was scheduling my 10 years later videos for this year and saw that this record came out in 2011, I knew I had to look at it, and I'm absolutely glad I did because it is fantastic. A lot of the tracks on here are very much built on electronic instrumentals with a clear emphasis on minimalism in regards to the writing. Unluck, for example, features a very disjointed beat, and I Never Learned to Share features a stellar mix of soul and glitchy electronics. In terms of the lyricism, the tracks generally feature very repetitious writing, but that works in the album's favor as it showcases that there's beauty in minimalism. A lot of times using a repetitive or minimal structure could make a song more annoying than anything, but in James's case, the sonic elements blend together seamlessly to buck that feeling. And I can even even see James being an artist that intentionally or not inspired a number of acts later down the line. I Mind, beyond the glitchiness and simple repetition of its lyrics, goes for an R&B style that reminds me of some of the work of modern R&B artists. And the beat also feels a bit poppy. I wouldn't be surprised if a song like this served as inspiration for a lot of today's modern pop artists, because this definitely sounds like something I could hear a lot of them doing. Limit to Your Love is a cover of the song originally by Feast, featuring a lovely piano instrumental and some interesting dub step elements, and To Care Like You is another mellow track that features great emotion fighting through its haziness and vocal variants. James also brings out a bunch of ballads on the album, but he does fantastic work on those tracks too. The Wilhelm Scream is very delicate and spacey with a vocal inflection that feels like it could have served as inspiration for someone like Sam Smith, and Linda's Fair One is super unique in how it has no instrumentals. The song is centered around James's vocoder vocals, which are stunning, and there's a very raw emotion to the track. When the actual instrumental kick in on the second part, Linda's Fair 2, they mix folk and electronic in a way that sounds so mellow and lovely, it kind of just feels like a hug. In a way, that's how I can describe much of this album, it feels like the musical equivalent of a hug. Even if the lyrics can occasionally be heartbreaking, the song sounds so lovely that it feels like you're just getting a nice warm hug while listening. Give Me My Month and Why Don't You Call Me are perhaps the simplest songs on here, being just piano ballads, but they're still emotional gut punchers during their very short lengths of under two minutes each. And Measurements, the album's closer, is a track that many have compared to sounding like a gospel choir, and I absolutely agree. It's beautiful though, James sounds great, the layering of his vocals is superb, and the simple bass groove works well to help emphasize his beautiful vocal work. Overall, James Blake's debut album is still a stunner a decade later. The record still feels very fresh and inventive, and James's ability to blend R&B and soul with electronic and dubstep is still wonderful. The production is consistently fantastic, and while James's vocal work may not have been the centerpiece of the entire record, he still shows a lot of potency on his vocals and the mixing on them fits the record perfectly. And as I mentioned earlier, James manages to take some repetitive lyrical structures and twist them in ways that feel clever, showing that there is beauty in simplicity and minimalism. As I said earlier, this record has the feeling of a nice hug. It's warm, refreshing, and comforting. There's a rawness to the entire record that makes it feel like it's shedding its skin right in front of our very eyes. It's still sublime, and it's abundantly clear from this record why James has become such a respected figure in the music industry. If you haven't listened to this record,
record yet, I highly recommend you change that right now. In fact, even though the video is not over, I wouldn't be upset if you just stopped the video right now and went to go listen to the album. Back in 2011, I don't know if I would have been able to fully appreciate this record. I was only 12 when it came out, so I probably would have just looked at it as some weird, glitchy, bloopy music. Listening to it now, though, I absolutely love it, and I think James did absolutely wonderful on it. If I had to put it on my scale, it would definitely get an excellent rating from me. Fantastic stuff from an artist with a great, consistent track record, and even to this day, the record still feels brand new. But that's just my opinion on this album. What did you guys think about it? Did you listen to it back in 2011? Do you still listen to it now? Did you love it then? Hate it then? Love it now? Hate it now? Are you just completely indifferent towards it? And what's your favorite James Blake record? Whether it's one of his main albums or one of his many EPs, which one do you consider the best? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. And if you guys want to support my passion for content creation by subscribing to my OnlyFans, where I create exclusive music review and poetry content for $4.99 a month, the link to that is also in the description. Again, it's no big deal if you can't or don't want to. I totally understand and will not beg for it. And I appreciate anyone who is able to. In terms of what's next, March is going to be a very busy month for 10 years later videos, which is why I'm going to try my best to do several of them in the month of February, because I believe there's about seven albums that I want to look at in March. So just to kind of take a little bit of stress off my shoulders, do these a little bit quickly, and make sure I have time in case new albums come out, I'm going to start looking at some of the March albums in February. The next one that I plan to look at is Avril Lavigne's 2011 album, Good Lullaby. And again, there will be plenty more across the month, so stay tuned for those. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.